This was my intro song. Whoa. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be painting my G35 calipers that came in the mail yesterday. I'm super excited that I got these because my 350Z currently needs two rear calipers since they're seized. If you guys are wondering why they're seized, it's because they are. The car's old. It has 180,000 miles on it, and the previous owner and the previous owner before him never really took care of the car. And the condition that I bought it in was relatively bad so I'm trying to fix all the components that I can so that I can drive this on the street safely and then I can start converting this car into a time attack build I know that later on in the process of the 350z I want to upgrade to a big brake kit because these calipers are not gonna last a day or two at the track and I need something that's gonna just hold me off for now since I'm still learning how to drive manual so I want to just kind of quickly show you guys the calipers so that you guys get an idea of what I'm working with Okay, so let's take a closer look at these calipers. Now, you guys can already tell that a car enthusiast owned this G35 based off of the caliper paint. Now, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but this was a poorly done job. As you guys can tell, the pin dust boots are painted right here, as well as um, the brackets to the brake pads are also painted and overall how half of the caliper is painted red and then the rest is not so from what this looks like it tells me that the person who painted these never removed them from the car they painted them on the rotor which is completely normal a lot of people do that it's a lot easier than removing the whole entire caliper and you know just having to bleed your brake lines and all that but we're gonna do it the right way. We're gonna remove the paint and then we're gonna go ahead and try to repaint these. So let's go do that. I'm sorry for the birds. There's um, an unusual amount of birds chirping for the past couple of days and the planes have been flying a lot more frequently through New Jersey, which I'm not understanding why. But the reason why I bought these calipers as well is because not only were they $135 for the set of four, but because they have 53,000 miles on them and I was able to see a picture of the G35 that these calipers came from. Now I want to share this picture with you guys because I thought it was pretty interesting to see. This G35 experienced some sort of rear passenger side damage. I believe the wheel flew off and broke into the quarter panel causing all that damage. But I came to the conclusion that the rear wheel is still in alignment so the hub was likely unaffected by the accident. So that's why I went ahead and I bought the calipers and I was kind of happy that I found them because I want to spend the least amount of money possible on this since I am going to be switching over to a big brake kit later on so I am on the lookout for a big brake kit for the 350 but for now these are gonna have to do and I'm really excited that I'm able to get these for such a great price but let's get on to the painting because I don't want to talk throughout this whole entire video
Now that you have everything disassembled, you're gonna wanna go ahead and remove the brake fluid that's inside of this caliper because later on, we're gonna end up having brake fluid everywhere if we don't do this. So what I'm gonna do is use this uh, piston compressing tool and this is from Harbor Freight. I bought it for $8 and I don't recommend using this one because it's cheap and your hands are gonna hurt because of this handle over here. Um, I bought another one from Advanced Auto Parts, but that one, I have no idea where it went. So we're gonna use this old brake pad from my 350 and we're gonna slide it right here and then we're just gonna turn this and compress the piston so that it's flush with this metal piece right over there. I'm still pressing in the piston, but you guys can see that the brake fluid is coming out. I'm gonna wash this away later, but for right now, I'm just gonna leave it there. Okay, so now we're gonna be using this industrial degreaser. This is called Purple Power. We're gonna be using this and as well as some Dawn soap. And if you guys don't have a Purple Power, you can also use this because it's a degreaser. You use this on dishes, it's safe. So I'm gonna go ahead with this degreaser first and then we're gonna wash it off with Dawn. So we're gonna spray this generously all around, making sure that all the areas of this caliper is soaked. And like I told you before, we are gonna be reusing these uh, brackets, so we're gonna also degrease that as well. Remember to be in a well-ventilated area when you're spraying Purple Power because this thing smells bad. So I'm gonna let this soak for about two minutes and then I'm gonna use a wire brush to take off all the dirt and hopefully some of the paint comes off with this. So we're using this wire brush over here and we're just gonna go ahead and scrub away the paint is actually coming off, which is really good. That means less sanding for me. With my microfiber cloth, I'm gonna dip this into some clean water and I'm just going to take away all that dirt that that degreaser took off. And then we're gonna go ahead and do that one more time. Then we'll spray again. And let that sit. And now we'll work with this part and try to get as much of the dirt Be very careful with your wire brush when you're working around here because you don't want to accidentally pinch the boot. Um, this is where your brake fluid stays. So if you pinch this, you're gonna have to replace it. So be very careful and try not to get in there. We're gonna use Dawn dish soap and we're really gonna get in there because the toothbrush has these little bristles that are gonna end up getting more into the nooks and crannies of the, the caliper. So just do that. <laughs> So you see how the brush is really getting in there and removing most of the dirt that the wire brush couldn't get out. That's what you wanna see when you're cleaning off these calipers and prepping them for paint. Put on some glasses. See how that's nice and shiny? really weird doing it this way but I have this mask because I bought this way before any of this stuff happened here in the world I was doing the insulation in my garage so I'm very lucky to have this but I wore this mask when I was sanding so now I'm just gonna be doing the um, alcohol process on this and then we're gonna start painting so I'm gonna put this on because there's still a bunch of uh, dust around the room so I didn't really want to breathe that in we're gonna grab some alcohol and we're just going to use our paper towel and we are going to rub it everywhere. So, seems like we did a good job at cleaning because not a lot of dirt is coming off.
So I'm using this gloss on uh, the calipers. I couldn't find anything else that's heat resistant, but this is up to, it's heat resistant up to 250 Fahrenheit. I don't know if this is meant for calipers, but we're just gonna use it because it's all I have and all I could find. I just wanted to show you guys this bleeder valve over here. I suggest that you guys change your bleeder valves whenever you are changing your calipers. Now, this one wasn't in bad condition, but I did paint over this, and I know this is just a little plastic piece that I can take right off. Um, I did buy some bleeder valves, but they're not the same size as this one, so I'm gonna have to go back to AutoZone and bring this valve with me so that I can compare it to the ones that I need. These were the wrong bleeder valves that I bought. These are too big for the calipers, so I'm gonna go back to AutoZone maybe tomorrow and get the right pair. So I'm going to start working on the front brakes. This is going to take me another night or two to finish, but I just really wanted to get on here and show you guys how I did the rear calipers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a like and comment down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!